Hello, and welcome to the Vlogging Pod. Tonight, we are joined by Shannon Lawrence. <laughs> welcome to the room, Shannon. How are you this evening? I'm good. Getting a break right. from work to be here. So how are you? Oh, awesome. Day off, huh? <laughs> well, you know, hour off. <laughs> All hour off. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, so I wanted to start right off because I hear that you have a new book coming out. Now, if I'm correct, it's March 26th that the new book comes out? That's right. Yep. March 26th next week. Oh, nice. Now, this the title. Now, I'm going to make sure I get this right. Is it Myth Stalker? Yes. Wendigo Nights. Okay, and that's from the Wendigo Night series? It It's the first, and it's intended to be a series. Nice. So tell us about the book. So it follows Selena, and her job is basically tracking down the creatures of native lore. Not so much lore, are they? Because they're real in her world, and she gets a phone call from somebody she's worked from, with before, her mentor, and he says he has something he can't handle and he needs her help he can't give her more information over the phone so she rushes to where he is and finds out that somebody she loves is being taken over by wendigo which is basically it's a spirit it's kind of a possession sort of thing and she has to find a solution before they turn so she has very limited time and Normally, her job would be to just go and, well, say, take out the Wendigo. There is no other solution. So now she's for, in a situation where she has to figure out some other way, or in the end, she is going to have to kill her loved one. Mm. And you plan on this to be a series, yes? Yes. There is plentiful <laughs> content in, <laughs> in native lore. So there are all kinds yeah. of great creatures. Oh, yeah. So I've got to ask. Okay, because and I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's because I'm revisiting it on Netflix because it is my all time favorite. When they first came out, I have the books and I like the shows. I even have some DVDs. Are you a supernatural fan? Oh, you bet. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> I even ran a round table at a con for supernatural fans, which was fun. Nice. We actually have it coming to Columbus this year. Oh, so nice. I know. I mean, I don't live in Columbus. I'm like uh, an hour or so out, but that would be so exciting. But yeah, I haven't been to an actual supernatural con versus other ones, but they seem like a lot of fun. I mean, the the oh, guys yeah. on it, the people on it, are fun. It looks like the joke around. Oh, the yeah. Now I used to, when I first started watching it when it first came out on the series I was a big Dean fan but now mm -hmm. as I'm watching it again I'm more into Sam I'm kind of like why is this kid getting such a raw deal I mean yeah he drank demon blood but who has it <laughs> That's funny now I wonder cuz of course I was a Dean fan too so now I'm like if I rewatched it would it change or would I still be a Dean fan but I tend to kind of I tend to go for the darkly sarcastic person over the serious, like, if you ask me Iron Man or Captain America, it's always going to be Iron Man as an example. Oh, so the oh, goody two shoes I, doesn't work for me. I love you so much <laughs> <laughs> because I'm exactly the same way. I love Iron Man. Those are the favorite. I always, I'll be honest with you, I'm not. I'm not really fond of Captain America. I really am not. I just, his prim proper little mannerism and stuff, you know what I mean? Just yeah, makes no. me want to puke. <laughs> and I like Chris Evans. But if you look at Chris Evans' other work, he usually is kind of that naughty, kind of the anti-hero type person. And now he's Captain America. And I'm like, nope, not working for me. <laughs> there goes, yeah, so. not working for me. I'm, I'm used to kind of... Um, I don't want to say any curse words, but you know, the kind of the Jack A double, you know, <laughs> yeah. of the shows. I kind of married that. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely married the sarcastic one. So. <laughs> oh, yes, I did too. Yes, I did. Drives me crazy, but in the same way, you know what I mean? He, oh, he yeah. fires my flames in a lot of ways. So That's when we right. talk... When we talk short stories, I have the understanding that that is your passion. Am I correct on that? Yes, you're right. Uh, that's, 
I've the my first love in writing. I will never give them up entirely. I love them. They've gotten me to where I am. Honestly, they are what forged my career instead of your traditional novel career. So uh -huh. I have an appreciation for them. Now, how did that start out for you? Honestly, you know, I just, I think that I first sat down and tried to write a novel and I was like, eh, <laughs> this is a, I'm not enjoying this. And then I, so I just started writing short stories to kind of hone the craft. And so I could start getting my name out there. Basically, I figured, well, I'll submit these and then I'll have something. Cause you know, you write a query letter and you have to, you feel mm -hmm. like you need to have something in it. And yeah at the beginning, you don't. And so I was writing these short stories and then I had something to put in there and I was like, nah, this is fun. <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing this. <laughs> right. Well, and now when you say fun. short, mm -hmm. now when you say short stories, are you talking like novella length or are you talking even shorter than that? Shorter than that. So on average, I'd say Three to 5,000 words would be the most common for me, but some are longer and uh, they're rarely shorter than the 3,000. But right. yeah, right around in there. See, I'm a novella girl. Mm. And I'll be honest with you, when I first started, because I, I wrote my first book, um, which I guess you could kind of say would be short story link, maybe a little bit longer than some that you may write, but um, it was like 15,000 words. Okay. And I wrote it on a query because it was written for where you wrote a short story and it was going to be put into a bigger book of short stories and it didn't get accepted from a publishing house and, but it started a fire. You know what I mean? I, I honestly wanted to see where the story went, you know, oh, and yeah. my husband is what pushed me. Cause I, I'd be honest with you. I was never going to write. I thought, I, I thought as much as I could do with short stories. I had never thought I could write anything longer. I was like, nah, this is too much work. I can't do this. <laughs> so I, I am, I'm right there with you. I love short stories. I think they're great. And you can, I even did a book of short stories myself. Well, poems and little short stories. So I actually love that kind of premise. Yeah. Well, and, and of course, sometimes they, you have a story and it doesn't work for that. Right. I feel like most yeah. stories, either they have their ultimate word count kind of at the beginning, you can tell uh -huh. this needs to be a novel or this would be great as a short story. <laughs> right. So, and what's funny about that is I'm editing a novel now that started out as a short story. I started writing it and I was like, oh, this is fun. Cause it was purely an experiment in the beginning. And mm -hmm. It just, and then I was like, well, this would clearly need to be a novella. And so then I kept working on it and I was like, you know what? I, I, I want to have a second point of view here. And so this is a novel. And it took me, I had to, I set it aside for a bit so I could think it through and then went back and wrote it. And it's now it's an edit and then I'll go to beta readers. But yeah, it, it, it obviously was not okay to be a short story. And that rarely happens to me. I kind of am able to determine from the beginning, but that one mm -hmm. did. It got away. I, now, how long did it take you to write that one that you're talking about? So I would say just a few months once I actually said yeah. this needs to be a novel because I hadn't finished it in like the form of a novella. I hadn't finished the first point of view. And mm -hmm. so I went back in and I had basically my laptop sitting next to my computer so that I could go in and hold that up and then start splitting into chapters. So I'd take what I'd already written and kind of rewrite as I went to, but put that there and then skip to the next chapter and write that second point of view. And I just did that all the way through. And it was much more fun once I got to where I'd stopped on the other one so that everything was fresh and new. But yeah, that it, it took a few months. I tend yeah. to though, I call myself a sprint writer and <laughs> <laughs> I rarely get a chance to sit down and write, but when I do, it just kind of pours out, right? Because I've had all these other right. things and it's been in my head. So I tend to get a lot written in meager chunks. <laughs> prior to prior to my She Shed, um, and now I've got a little home office too that I write in, but prior to those, I used to just take my laptop to the bathroom and I would write. <laughs> You know, on my second duty list, I'd be in there and I, that's where I did my writing. It was short bits. Like I would sit down and write a thousand or so words or even anywhere from a thousand to like 300 or four. I would set a goal for the day yeah. and 
you know, it's a good thing we have two bathrooms because I sometimes the writing would be a little bit longer and people are like, yo, hello. <laughs> it's our turn. <laughs> what are you doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> now, I've read that you like to engage the senses of your readers. Could you care to elaborate on that? It's just so and I've done a, I've done a workshop on it. I call it sense and sensibility, but you know, with the proper spelling there for sense. And, yeah. and it's just, I like to, I make sure that I incorporate the senses into the stories because, you know, mostly what I write is horror. And I feel like you really in horror, especially need to be able to draw the reader into what's happening. So there's a couple ways to do that. And one of those, of course, you need to have a character that everybody's going to care about because otherwise they don't care if that character is in danger. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. And then I think that you need to engage the senses so that the, the reader is fully in the story. And so it's just making sure that I go back through if I need to and touch on those senses. Cause there's a few, we obviously use sight a lot mm -hmm. in stories. And then I think that the hearing would be the second most common that you find in there. But mm -hmm. I wrote a once while involving taste, especially now in horror that can go in terrible <laughs> ways, but right. that can also be effective is to involve taste in something. But if you want somebody to know something's exquisite or you want them to get in that sort of mood, then you're going to describe the textures and the taste of a food, say. So that mm -hmm. feel, and I think feel is also big, touch is big in horror too, because, well, there's going to be pain, but there's going to be other elements. And so it's just incorporating all the senses in there and, and just making sure that you're setting this scene really well. Right. Now, I find that interesting. When I first started, now mind you, this was years ago, okay? I think I started writing back in, oh my goodness. I want to say 2005, but anywhere from 2005 to 2010, don't quote me on this, okay? Because I'd have to actually look. This feels like decades ago because I'm so old. Anyways, but I... I actually had some friends read my book and I never even thought about it. I never put too much thought about it, but apparently I used a lot of scent as far as like the smell. Uh -huh. And I did not realize, of course, we were talking about werewolves and I got a little bloody. Okay. I mean, <laughs> my, it wasn't meant to be horror, but it was a little, it's a little dark. Okay. <laughs> it's a little dark and there's a lot of smell in there. And I didn't realize it until one of the guys who read my book and he actually reached out to me and he says, I've never seen a book done with so much scent. And I was like, why? <laughs> you <know? What? laughs> yeah, I just never thought about it. You know what I mean? I just thought of it as like, you know, because I've got dogs. I just thought, well, something that would be very, you know what I mean? Prone to yeah, maybe it a makes werewolf. Sense. It's, yeah, it yeah. makes sense for a werewolf, though, because they would be using scent for a lot. And also they would have a, you know, they might have a smell. So anybody well, yeah. around them might smell. Well, yeah, because I mean, I I have found that I've used uh, copper very well as the scent of blood and coppery smell. You know what I mean? And it's kind of taken over. So <laughs> I can follow I, your league on that. That's the problem, though, right? Is I went to something once and they're like, now I want you to describe the sense of smell without using anything having to do with copper or pennies or iron. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I don't even remember what I did. I did something and I was like, I don't remember it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Only thing I could think of it would be metallic, but still right? that's still along the lines of, you know, the metals and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be lost on that one. Silver. <laughs> you know? like, what is a metal? I don't... <laughs> hey, Google, what does silver smell like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure so, we've all Googled something similar, you know, like something absurd like that. And so, the funny thing yes. is there's answers sometimes. So. Oh, my God. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Um, my husband told me once because um, he's... Um, he does all kinds of things. He's a uh, maintenance for a big company. And I asked him, how would you blow something up? Because I wanted to have the reality of it. So he gave me this very, um, like, for a heater to blow up one of those big, and in in, you know what I mean? The big, humongous industrial heater things for to heat up big buildings. Yeah. And he very well had it, like, it was very, 
oh, how can I say this? Um, technical, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so I had to dive deep. And so then I had to do some research and find out more about what he was talking about, what machine. And then I started had to get graphic. And then I'm like, okay, well, how do I explain this to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised that I was able to get a chapter and a half out of what he gave me as a paragraph. I was like, I'm a mad genius. I might be the <laughs> only one who understands this, but I'm a mad genius. <laughs> and my poor husband gets stuff from me all the time because he he's yeah. in computers now, but he used to be in construction. So I've got all these questions. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes no. I don't ask and then I just do something. And I think it's right. I Like I discovered in a recent book, I had somebody up in the ceiling crawling along it and i described the ceiling a certain way he was like you know that kind of ceiling wouldn't bear a human yes. load like a person. i was like oh my gosh i have to change so much in that scene now it's like yes. three scene. well prior to me asking my husband about that i about how to blow something up with the heater um we had, had a discussion and i forget what it was about we were watching a movie or something because you know that's not how that would happen so when i got to that point in my book i was like um, <laughs> do this then, and so yeah, because so I totally get what you're saying. Like when your husband tells you that wouldn't hold that weight, I get that. I get it. Oh, um, I'm, and so I was like, man, I like involve details in this that I can't, <laughs> that I can't apply. I have to change all the details like this. Yeah. Oh, oh don't it. you hate that? Yes. I'm in edits right now and I have to make notes to myself. Now, wait a minute. I know I mentioned something later in the book. Is that changing that going to affect that? And I'm like, ah, oh, crap, Ola. <laughs> yes. I gotta go through everything. I hate editing. Laura will tell you. Laura has been with me. She's edited for me and I hate editing like no other, like no other. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan. I was shocked to find out that some people prefer the editing over the writing. And I was like, why? Why don't you oh, be an editor my. then? Like, why are you a writer right Which, that's a true horror that, writer really, right there yeah <laughs> the editing's a true horror i'm telling you that is, is. i so, usually like put it off and then i have to do a whole lot of editing at once because i, I just moved on to the next shiny thing <laughs> yeah i love you so much because <laughs> you are so me on that you are so me uh the book i'm working on currently i, I put off since 2015 just so you know oh yeah <laughs> yeah so when we talk about your books and horror, and horror, so excuse me, um, tell me the difference, uh, visceral or psychological. I've heard that you use both, but tell me which you think you're most drawn to. I do, here's the thing. I, I feel like psychological horror appeals to me more because mm -hmm. it tends to be more real world to me and therefore i find that more frightening like i find an evil person more frightening than a random monster mm. but in terms of having fun writing it i think it's more fun to write the visceral monster type stories where there's some gore and there's some more action so it really depends on my mood when i'm sitting down to write something mm. but yeah i like them both I feel more personally impacted by psychological horror though. Yeah, I could kind of get that because I think when you talk about like supernatural horror, um, in the back of your mind, you can put some reality that, well, this isn't real. You know what I mean? This isn't real. But the psychological, when you talk about that, as far as like, you know what I mean? People around us, there's a potential of that being real, you know? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I could see that. I could totally see that. I could totally yeah. see that. I well, so, cause like one of my early stories was, it was actually, that one was more, it was kind of both really, but mm -hmm. it, it was just cause I like to go on late night walks. And when my kids were little, uh, that was all I could do. And a neighbor startled me in the middle of the night when I was walking. Cause they, I, I live in, <laughs> Colorado Springs. It's hilly because I'm in the foothills where I am. I'm on mm -hmm. the west side of town. And um, I, you can't, there's no flat sidewalk. So I'm walking up this hill and the guy must have been crouching, maybe fixing a lawn sprinkler or something. Oh. So I know he was there. And as I come up, he suddenly stands up and it's this figure just looms up at the top of the hill. And I'm like, I had to stop. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what's happening? And then I realized it was a dude in a bathrobe or whatever so mm. but i was like i'm also gonna steer clear of you <laughs> because 
because just because you're you live in the same neighborhood as me doesn't mean that you're not a, a threat in some way. So yeah, I'm going to divert and I'm going to go this way. But um, in I, in the story, of course, it goes a little differently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you added it to the story on your story. I added, yeah i I added a version of what happened, and then and that's like a first run in. And then something ah. happens later on. So that one, I think that one was called Love Thy Neighbor. It was one of my early, or, sorry, Know Thy Neighbor. <laughs> know Thy know Neighbor. That, know <laughs> you, can, thy you can love your neighbor, but don't love your neighbor. But um, yeah, I, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the title. <laughs> I think I was like in one of my first 10 to get published. So at this point. I get a little foggy no, on the title sometimes. Oh, no, I get you. I When I write, when I start writing, I have to bring up, I, I keep separate documents. I like to have two computers next to me when I'm writing. One is just for like, um, like if it's a series, all the characters, information, their bios and all that stuff, I keep on one thing so that I can remember mm -hmm. like, what was this person? Wait, how tall were they? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking yeah. at now with this first book. I'm like, I need to create my series Bible before I move any farther ahead on the next story so I can comb through and make sure I didn't switch something <laughs> in the next ones. So I am at that when, point. When you talk about that, when you talk about your Bible, um, Tell me this, your book Bible. I should make sure anyone who's pulling in yes. knows what we're talking about. Uh, book Bible. Um, when you start doing that, do you find that that develops as the stories are created? Or do you like to have this firm in place before you start writing the book? I am definitely, I am a pantser, discovery writer, or whatever preferred <laughs> name now. But it's definitely developing as it goes. Yes. So, yeah. God, I, can, I love you. <laughs> have a lot in common. <laughs> Man, I love you so much. Uh, because I'm so the same way. I, I actually, when I'm writing, I'm like, the book, to me, it's exciting because the book is, I'm like, like getting you to read a new book. You know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah. how's this going to, how's this going to end? I don't even like to know the ending before I do it. I like for it to come as it goes so that it's a surprise to me. Absolutely. And sometimes when I, Sometimes when I'm editing, it's a total flip and surprise. I'm like, what the heck was I thinking with this? <laughs> <laughs> Why did I do this? I just complicated. All right, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So now as we talk characters, talk to me about identifying your characters and how that works in horror books. So I tend to, again, I don't, I don't really go in, I try and figure out right away as I start that writing, I'm like, who is this? Like, who am I when I'm writing this? And I always want to put something human in there. You know, like one of my stories, for example, I knew, I did know on this one because it was another experiment. I like to experiment a lot because I don't want to get bored. I have a really short attention span. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to enjoy what I'm doing and I want to try mm -hmm. new things. So anyway, there's a lot of stories that like start out uh, what if I did this thing? And this one started out, what if I, I posted on Facebook and I said, what are the words that gross you out other than moist, basically? Mm. <laughs> and got some, gathered some up and I was like, what if I put these like trigger words in this story and, and, and what could I build around that? And so I realized going in, I was going to set this at a rest stop bathroom, that one of those ones that's not a toilet, it's a hole in the ground basically with a pedestal oh. above it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, now why is this guy here? And I realized he was traveling cross country to get to a new job he'd taken. He'd left everything behind and he just had the possessions that he had, he was carrying with him. That was it. He, he just shut down everything and was starting over new. And then I, I knew something about this character and I, I had a reason for him to be at this place, but I also had something to develop off of. So I don't know where I pulled them. I'm sure it's, it's, you know, this combination of whatever I've absorbed from things I've watched or listened to or the people I've been around, but I never actually fully pulled in anybody I know. I know a lot of people do that, but I have not written a character based directly off of anybody I know, mm -hmm. but I like to pull pieces and I'm like, what would work with this story and this character and make somebody care that they're in this battle or whatever it is that they're in. Mm. I I don't know. 
Now, I have done some characters loosely based on some things like my husband will say, mm -hmm. and that not really him, but in um, you know when we talked about how you know <laughs> cocky <laughs> mannerisms can be sometimes, and sometimes things are said, and I'm like, mm, cringeworthy moment, you know, and I'll be like, yeah, I could see Jeff saying that. That's my husband. <laughs> I could oh, that's see funny. Him saying you know what, my husband. <laughs> Yes, it's Is Jeff. it Jeff? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my gosh! We have so much in common. I love you to the end of time. <laughs> it's a little oh eerie my. at this point. <laughs> oh my gosh! It is totally eerie. And you know what's funny? As I was thinking when you were saying about the short stories, that's what I should have done because my husband gets on me all the time that I should have stuck with one series and finished it. Hence why I went back to a book I started in 2015, because he's kind of, he, I love him to death. Okay. <laughs> love him more than anyone in my life, but he's also the one I want to tear to shreds the most. Too. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. <laughs> so when he says something to me, I'm like, it has weight with me. It has weight. You know what I mean? Yes. So he told me I should finish a series. And that's the reason I went back to this book that I never finished. I have several books that I have not finished that are waiting for me. Anyways, hence the point. But so when you say that, when I when you were telling me the short stories, I'm thinking, you know what I did wrong? I should have done all those as short stories because when you said you had a short, you have a short um, attention span. That's me because that's what I went from one series to the next. And I think, crap, Ola, that's what I should have done was short stories. Dang it to heck! Do you know I actually know somebody, and he only writes short stories, and he's he, and they're all mystery. And what is it? R.T. Lawton, I think, is what he would be under. And yeah, he only writes short stories, but he writes them in series. So mm. because he writes mystery, he's been in Hitchcock and all of that over and over and over again. And <clears throat> the editors know him now. And so he gets to publish these series that way. And I've considered trying something like that. But then, no, for whatever reason, the things that are going to be series to me always come as books. Mm. <laughs> instead of like yeah. novels and if it's a short story it's a one-off yeah i i the more i listen to you i'm just like you know i should have done that that's what i should have done instead of having oh i think i have about seven books that are not completed like halfway done marks you know okay, and yeah, I, yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of piled up on me but, but i have that short attention span like what you said i mean i have published 12 books so I have that out there and I'm a little different. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I'm, I'm, it's either like you love me or you totally freaking hate me. I can't seem to get the middle ground. <laughs> so You know what? As long as there are some that love you, it's all right. That's where it needs to be. <laughs> yeah. I find that there's a certain mind that has to love me. It's a little quirked and messed up, but that's fine. I can live with it because it's mine too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. So <laughs> <laughs> I know I've gotten so sidetracked here because you're blowing me away. You have a Jeff too. I don't know. I'm just, um, <laughs> it's, like, it's, oh it's true gosh. though. Like in the writing community, I would say mm -hmm. that we tend to be, yeah, probably different from a lot of the folks and <laughs> it, it, I, yeah, because I mean, I, there are people that write for the masses. I am not one of them. I, I write for what I want to read. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes um, I do, and I have tongue twisters and I don't mean to do them, but I always do them. And I don't know why they're always in my sentences. You know what I'm talking about? Like the words that kind of round around and you're like, well, what? what, what? <laughs> 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 That's me. And I do it all the time. And I never realize it until people point it out to me. And I'm like, well, crap, you're right. I do do that. <laughs> I don't know just why, say, but it's in there. <laughs> just work for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Read, just, just work for yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> I make you work at it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. So <clears throat> when we talked um, now, I do know that you do. I want to point this out to people. You do have a book that um, kind of gives a, uh, kind of a bit about your process about how to write short stories do you want to give that a pun here and let people know about it yeah it's called the business of short stories and i did it again because when i started out in the writing world the first thing i really did i attended one little workshop and then i went to a conference that a friend had said come with me and then she didn't even go and <laughs> i 
I was just, this was at the beginning. I had a toddler and a baby and my husband was like, go do the thing. And I did the thing. And there was so much I didn't know about because what we see in movies and TV doesn't make any sense. But as I started doing my thing with short stories, I realized I didn't know other people that were doing the same thing. And when I went to conferences and workshops, they were all based on talking to novel writers. Mm -hmm. And when you do research on stuff, it's to novel writers. It's not to short story writers. Now, that is changing. That has been changing over the last few years. I have seen more awareness. And so short stories have really been making a resurgence. And that's fantastic. But when I was doing this originally, which was about 07, they just weren't part of anything at all. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to kind of reach out to those people who might be the same as me in this and or just people who are interested in short stories in general, because I've seen a lot of novelists going, hey, I see that this is a thing. I want to dabble and learn this, too. And I've also seen a lot of novelists say, no, short stories are too hard for me. I can't do it. And so I wanted to speak. What's that? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted to speak to just all those people and put out there, hey, you don't have to follow this one path. And Mm -hmm. not everybody in the past has followed this one path. How many shorts and poems did Edgar Allan Poe do? Uh, Ray Bradbury got his start doing shorts. He had written a ton of short stories before he ever wrote Martian Chronicles. And Martian Chronicles was pulled from a bunch of Mars-related short stories he'd done. Even the publisher said, well, go back and look at these, see if there's a thread and write me a book. And so it has happened, but it's just not talked about. And we had to read short stories by what Ambrose Bierce and all these other people when we were in high school. So yeah, I wanted to get out there that there's not just one path to getting published. Right. And I'm a I speak at conferences and I do the same things novelists do. I get the same sort of treatment as novelists do. And I'm only now becoming a novelist, but I've been in this for probably over Uh, about a decade, like actively doing the thing and being sort of recognized as a local writer and that sort of thing. So yeah, the book was about that and kind of the business aspects and what you do beyond that, because it was all stuff I struggled and couldn't find in the beginning and had to figure out on my own. And I don't feel like other people should have to have that struggle. So I wanted to put it out there. And then there's a big chunk on marketing because we all hate it. (laughs) Y'all, gosh, yes. I hate that too. I, I'm really bad at it. I, I'm, I, to be honest with you, I'm so shocked when I go to pull my sales that I still sell. I'm, I'm like, I don't know anything on this and it's still selling. So that, yeah, it sort of shocks me. Me but, too. So, whenever <laughs> yeah. there's a bump and I'm like, I didn't even do anything. I didn't. I know, right? Um, I think things have changed when I, I, we went over our time a little bit, but that's fine. Don't worry. I know we usually do 20 minutes, but because we're like, uh, 33 on my camera over here, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, because I've had such a great time with you. Sometimes we go over. <laughs> this is um, oops, you guys have so much in common. <laughs> I know it is. When when you talk about the short stories and most of the people at the conferences, I've done my fair share as well. Um, we might have actually seen each other at some point and never knew it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I've done my fair share, but the, the one thing I found out, and maybe I think I'm older than you. I'm in my fifties. Um, okay, I'm in my forties. Okay, yeah, I kind of figured. So, well, not that you were, you know what I mean. I wasn't stereotyping. I just knew that I was older, <laughs> anyways. Um, because I I'm older than dirt now. Usually, everybody I have on here, I'm older than, but whatever. <laughs> anyways, um, so. I noticed when I started, there was a big stereotype, even on novellas, as far as like KDP and stuff like that, and being able to get the profits that we were getting because um, they based it on sales. And I know there was a big stink at one point from people that wrote shorter stories and getting in the fair profits of what bigger stories was going but I think that that stereotype is kind of went down more, especially since Vela's are now a part of Amazon's, um, you know what I mean? Being yeah. able to read and do the short stories and having segments put out there. <clears throat> and also the Vela's, which is, I'll be honest with it's the route I'm going. So if anyone's interested in my book, that's how all my work is going out now. It'll be Vela's and then right to Audible because Ve- Amazon's letting you do it. So I'm going to do it in Vela and then they're going to go right into Audible. I'm not even going to publish paperbacks anymore. Oh, yeah. Or, that sounds... uh, 
yeah, or Kindle or anything like that. They're going to go right into that stage. Um, but that's just a preference on me because I have a lot of other things going on in my life and it just makes it easier and convenient for me because I do the majority of the work myself and I have to format. I got to do all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's, and I got to do the cover work and I got, you know what I'm saying? You, you get oh, my yes. long list of complaints here. <laughs> um, yeah. So you get where I'm going. So that's just for me, but for me, uh, writing has never been something about profit. And, and that's how a lot of us start. A lot of us are, it's in for the passion of it. So for me, that's the biggest draw is I want to be able to put it out there and I want to be able to put my take on it because I have a sound booth, I have a studio and I want to do the audibles. So I'm excited about that to actually give my character's life through my voice. Yeah. And that's something that I'm looking at doing ultimately too, is just doing it myself. Cause I, you know, I have a podcast, I have the setup and I'm like, yeah. why not? Yeah, you should. You honestly should. I mean, and it, it brings out your creative side so much more. I mean, you get to live the characters as you know what I mean? As soon as you're, they're on the page, you're like, mm, mm. now sometimes we're a little more critical. <laughs> I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. yes. My, my, <laughs> I've done two so far. And to be honest with you, it was really hard to let them go because I think I would have done, I would have think I would have done them a little bit different again. You know what I mean? So it was really hard for me to let them go. If that makes sense. It does. It does. Absolutely. And I've seen people like fall victim to that and actually go back and edit or do new additions. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I I feel like you need to go forward as hard as it is. Yes. Because my first work comparison to what, like I said, when I went back from 2015, and I've really got to read this stuff. And I'm like, and of course, I'm going to say this, and this is going to sound really cocky. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> I think I'm like, wow, I'm a mad genius. I'm so much better now. What? Wow. I'm blowing myself away here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you don't go back sometimes and look at something or write something and just be, feel like, oh, look at that. I wrote that yeah. beautiful thing right there. And it's, I think mm-hmm. it's fair enough because you already said you're super critical of yourself. I know I'm super critical of myself and I, I've had to work to just kind of stamp that down and say, you know what? They bought that story as is. So, yeah. <laughs> like, well, see, it's like this for me. It, this is just for an instance. When I wrote the DHC, which is short for the Dear Art Clan series, I just refer to it as the DHC. And, um, it's, this is how people love me and hate me. I got like a, and I'm serious, and I'm not even, I'm not even exaggerating on this. Okay, I got, a, and I've told people this before. I've got a five paragraph review, ripping me to oh. shreds, ripping me. But the last paragraph was the killer. But where is book five? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I don't, I'm not kidding you. It ripped me to shreds. That's, but that was the biggest reason more. I, yeah, <laughs> but I stopped reading reviews after that because it was like, and of course I actually pulled away from the series at that point, which is, this is years later now that I'm trying to go back and you know what I mean? Finish it like my husband suggested, but <clears throat> it was funnier in heck. Cause I was just being, they just tore me to shreds, like poking holes through me, like no other, you know what I mean? But then it was like, but where is book five? <laughs> well, and that's the thing, though, is that I've seen authors like share their, st- especially in in horror, and I'd think probably romance. I think would be two of the big ones for this. But mm. because again, both of those engage emotions. That's what they're. That's what they're intended to do. That's how they go through, make it through, and yeah. capture people. But the fans can just be. <laughs> <laughs> just yes they'll yeah. write and they're like i'm your they're basically kathy bates you know they're they're right to you and they're like i'm your biggest fan but here are the things you did wrong and it's like uh, okay <laughs> yes yes i mean i think the best advice i gave a new writer and when i first started this podcast i had i had her on the show and i i kind of because she was in my stream and i liked her and she was new and I kind of watched, we all get excited when we get those first reviews. So we repost them and we're like excited mm-hmm. and it's great because, you know, the first few you get are probably family and friends <laughs> and people that know you or people that are in the writing community because they want to help you out, especially when they're new themselves. So they'll read your stuff. They're more kindly. Okay. 
But <laughs> after a while, because your numbers start to gain on that book, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get that one who's going to be like tearing you up. And I saw her reply to it on, on Facebook. Uh -oh. And I was like, uh -oh. <laughs> I, yeah. And so I, I asked her if I could speak to her and, and, you know, and she was like weird thinking I was going to like rip her up or something too. And I, I told her, I said, one thing that I've learned, and this is the honest to God truth. When I was young and dumb, well, dumber, <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing I did, I responded to something. And someone else, another author, and I responded in a way that I thought was vague. And I did it on one thing. And then on another thing, I had posted the positive of different stuff. I won't go into the gist of it because it's, you know, it's water under the bridge. But they had did the research. They went through all my social media accounts and found out what I was talking about and called me out. Oh. Called me out publicly to rip me to shreds. <sighs> and yes. And I Nothing. thought I did it in a way where I didn't make point to who it was about or anything. You know what I mean? But yes. they went through my feed and pieced it together to be that much. And so who I. Who has that much time? <laughs> I, I didn't think people did. I don't. No. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> but they do. And so I, I told her, I said, what I did, and it'll, it's, you I mean, you can take it with a grain of salt. And I said, but I wouldn't read reviews. What you need to do is you need to have, if you're going to look for the people that want to have it, you know, we're going to have, have your readers, have people that are going to give you an honest feedback, go through it, have an editor, if that's what you need. And you know what I mean? And go through it. But when you go and read the reviews and you base your reactions off of that or publicly say, or if you want to read them publicly, don't say anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> go right. to your bathroom or my sound booth, <laughs> scream your head off. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Without the mics on. <laughs> I, I seriously, I think I have that yeah. even in that book, that business of short stories, like don't, mm. don't ever respond. To yeah. the reviews, like don't argue, don't mm -hmm. just don't do it. It's not going to do what you think it's going to do. It's not no, going to make it's you not. better. It's going to turn off more people. You just got to suck it up and move on, and it sucks. But like you, I just I got that advice first off, and that is one thing I've stuck mm -hmm. to. I've broken a lot of rules, right? But yeah, one thing I've stuck to is I'm just not going to read. Yeah, right. I'm not going to read those. I'm not, and I'm Mr. so no response, Mister. <laughs> Mr. Dearheart uh, comments into the room, don't feed the trolls. And that's exactly, you can't, you cannot feed it because if you do, there are people who are just going to pick apart that and they love it to be able to do it. Well, that's what and, they wanted was to pick a fight, basically. They, yes. wanted, they had whatever emotion they were having at that time and they needed, they wanted that back. Yes. Yes. And it, you know, so you just have to pull yourself away from it. That's why I have in every bit of my books, <laughs> there is this huge thing. It is my uh, warning label. <laughs> in every one of my books, I swear to God, it is a warning label about all the bad things about me in big words. You know what I mean? Because I had a thesaurus. <laughs> 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 and so in big words, my big thesaurus words, I put, hello, you know, I'm a little different. If you can't like that, please put this book down. Basically, that's the generalization. But, you know, with thesaurus, we'll write bigger. <laughs> <laughs> if you, and if you don't understand these words, then also maybe that is a sign. <laughs> yeah. Here's a little you. star for it. They're at the bottom of the page. <laughs> So what's coming in 2024 for you? What's coming next? I will likely be in the fall, well, let's say probably October, putting out another collection of short stories. So I've already started cultivating that and putting those together because uh, they, they always consist of some that have already been published, but also some new stories that nobody's seen. And as I get my rights back, then I start planning that out. So that's going to be next. And then I don't know the timeline. I'm thinking probably 2025, though, is going to be book two in the Mythstalker series, but also hopefully this horror novel that I'm, I'm about to send out to beta readers. So 
Nice. We'll see. Now, <laughs> when you just for people who are listening who may not understand, when you say get your rights back, so you had a publisher at one point that had the rights to a certain yeah. area books. Okay. So that because it's a collection of short stories, and each of those short stories has been published already by in a magazine or in an anthology that collects stories from a bunch of different people, and. Right. If you're doing it right, uh, if you're reading your contracts, if you're not submitting, if it's a problematic contract, then you should be getting your rights back on your stories after X period of time. And right. you as the author should always have the copyright. It is yours to begin with. They are taking a certain amount of rights, uh, basically first rights usually, to be the first one to publish that in the public eye. And so, yeah, I keep track of it. I have a spreadsheet. And when I have officially have the rights back on my stories, then that means that I am free to put them in a collection of my own. That's all my own stories eventually, which to my way of thinking means I'm reclaiming that and I'm going to be the one that makes money off of it now instead of that publisher. Awesome. Well, we've reached that time in the show, guys. It's our Amazon deal of the day. Now, a lot of the times when I do these I'd like to get things that I have had, I buy or have had, or I've had some personal reference. Now, this one, I want. <laughs> I just want it. I don't know why. I just do. I have not bought it. I'm just saying I found this deal on it, and I was like, holy crap. This is a Ring Video Doorbell. It is a 1080 HD video improved motion detective. Easy installation. I just love being able to watch my Amazon deliveries. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I trust them, but you know what I mean? I like to know where my packages are at. <laughs> so this one is 40% off of the $99.99, leaving us with a sale of $59.99. If you're interested in these doorbells, then they will be the, the link will be in the bio of this podcast. I want to thank you again, Shannon, for being on this. And I would love to have you back. I mean, you are absolute Jew. I'd love to find out more that I have in common with you. <laughs> <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Thank you. Oh, and thank uh, you, Mr. Well, Deerheart. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Deerheart, for the like on the show. I want to thank all our listeners for tuning in again. Thank you so much. I, you guys, we, I think we're over, I think we're what, almost 2K followers now on listeners and downloads. So it makes me ecstatic that you're still tuning in, what, three years later or four years. Well, I don't know what we're up to now, but thank you so much for being here. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye for now.